There's a number of points. This is such a great um, beatitude. Blessed are the pure. They want to see God. I want to see God. We want to see God today. Mm -hmm. And when our hearts are pure, it opens up, up the ability, our spiritual eyes, to even see where God is moving. Mm, it's true, yeah. And I think uh, it goes back to this idea of being born again. And that's Jesus said, for you to, in order to enter or see the kingdom, you got to be born again. And that's where the heart transplant takes place, the heart change takes place. And then we continue to be washed by the word yeah. because we live in a world that's polluted by sin. So we're justified, we're saved, but then the sin continues to kind of like get on us like dirt does. And you got to keep washing it off. That's a really good way to put it. I think that's why that illustration at the end of the service is so powerful mm -hmm. because then we can all relate to that. Yeah, yeah, there is stuff that just needs to be displaced. Mm -hmm. And it's this constant displacement. God's renewed us. He's given us a clean heart. But it's like you said, that dirt wants to attach itself to us. Yeah. And we just, it's that uh, yesterday at spiritual cleansing, that verse in Titus 3, 5, the washing of the regeneration of the word. Like it's just that, there's just that constant displacement of the junk mm -hmm. that wants that we think, oh, that's okay, right? Isn't that? okay because we're around it so much maybe even at your school your university you start thinking well maybe that is right maybe I am being too narrow-minded or maybe that's not what God's Word really says and we start to, then we realize wait a minute blessed are the pure in heart when my heart is purified I realize that stuff no yeah no there is there the truth is the truth that's a great point yeah and I think what happens also like we we get caught up by the empty or the hollow philosophies of this world, mm. which Paul says be careful with. And so as we continue to read, receive the word, it actually destroys those strongholds, those things in our minds that take place where we're like, ah, porn, it doesn't matter. Everybody watches it. So why should, why should I not? Yeah. Or whatever the case might be. Yeah. Gambling, uh, well, it's not really a big deal. Or whatever they, we, we want to put in there where we get into it. And then we, we make excuses for it. Yeah, that's a really good point because it just, but again, that displacement. And I think today's message mm -hmm. is a great opportunity to say it's a fresh start. Yeah. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit. I think even the prayer that we just prayed at the end of the service, it's a great time to say, okay, using whether it's porn, gambling, something like that. It's like, okay, there's a displacing. God has purified mm -hmm. my heart. Yeah. And now it becomes even clearer. It's like, oh, okay. And not only that d does it become clearer, he's at work in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. And he, it's on his strength. Mm -hmm. He allows us to continue to walk in that. And I always, yeah. oh, I love what you said at the beginning, Pastor Dave, where you said he wants us blessed mm -hmm. blessed are the pure in heart you know, yeah. that blessing is there he's saying if you if you go this direction having a pure and desiring a pure heart allowing me to purify your heart not only will you see me but you'll be blessed absolutely and we want to walk in that blessing that christ alone can give us and he deals with the internal because a lot of times our world or what we hear from other religions or even government they try to fix problems externally mm. but they don't get to the root issue of it so a lot of people say hey how do we help the addiction problems and other things that we see in our city uh throwing more money at it doesn't help yeah. it's it's a heart issue yeah and the gospel is what gives us that internal scrubbing right oh that's that a good way to put us, it so an internal scrubbing so it's heard a lot about integrity uh, that 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 is the purity of integrity and living an integrous life mm -hmm. in our home, especially in our home. Uh, you know, there, we have all these different pies, as you had mentioned, these little pieces of pie. But the filling should be the same everywhere. Uh, in our home, I think if you can walk in integrity in your home, you can walk in integrity anywhere. Yeah, because at home, I think sometimes we get too comfortable, maybe with whether it be your spouse or your kids. And you feel like you, you don't need the same level of excellence, maybe, or integrity. Um, I don't know what it is, but with others outside, with strangers, others, um, some, a lot of people put on a mask of coming across as better than they are. And that's not what God wants for us. He wants us to be pure in heart. And so wherever you are, whoever watching, whether it be your kids, your wife, your spouse, your mom, your, your family members, or strangers, you're the same person. And that ultimately is a heart issue. Uh, if we try to change ourselves or fix ourselves behaviorally, mm -hmm. uh, 
we're not dealing with the root issue. Mm. A number of years ago, there was a, a campaign that really went around the world called What Would Jesus Do? Remember mm -hmm. the bracelets? There's a little plastic yeah. bracelets. And the whole idea behind that was that God always sees everything. And what would he do if he was yeah. sitting beside you in your home, if he was if he was wherever you are, which he is. And mm -hmm. it was just meant to be a reminder that he's actually there. So thinking of that story of Rick Warren and how he said what he said to his son, and then he has this invitation what would you do if you were in that position? I would go and speak for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. You snooze, you lose, boy. No, <laughs> I. Uh... <laughs> Uh, it's a good uh, it's a last one. week's because message <laughs> was on mercy. mercy yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that one. <laughs> um, no, I think <laughs> this is a difficult situation because he made a promise yeah. to another. Uh, person or another place where right? he had to go back. But I think what he chose was family. Yeah. So what he chose was his son. And so I think, yeah, for myself, I think about the same thing with my girls. And I think about if I make a promise, then I'm going to come through with it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want my kids growing up thinking that, oh, okay, this is, I guess, how, how it's normal. Mm -hmm. And so what happens a lot of times, I think if we're brought up in a way where we haven't seen much integrity, then we think this is normal. And so the people that they hang out with or the people they get, they choose to date yeah. might also look like something like their dad wow. who didn't have integrity, who wasn't, didn't keep his promises. So I don't want that at all. And obviously I want to glorify God. So my kids, I want them to see Jesus in me. Yeah, I think that's the key, right, is the pure in heart. For they see God, mm -hmm. and we are a representation in our home yeah. of, of the presence of Jesus actually Absolutely. being there, and, and we do that. One thing my dad did, which I really appreciated when I was, I, I would have been my last year in grade 12, um, so I would have been 17, and um, I was going through... Um, a situation that he really needed to intervene, I'll put it mm. that way. He was my intervention, and I was mad. I didn't want him to intervene. I liked the, the friendships that I had, but, I mean, now looking back, he absolutely did the right thing. But he stepped in, and it w now I, and I realized what a big deal it would have been. Mm. And in that moment, he said, the reason I'm saying no to you, and I'm so adamant, which I was like, ah, why are you saying no to me? You can't say, anyway, all of that, but he sat me down and he asked me to sit at his, at his feet. And that was, you know, it was just to, even just to be there. And he says, I just want to be your father. And mm -hmm. I want to apologize where I have let you down to think that I, I raised you to be with people like that. Mm -hmm. And that was a point in my life that was so powerful. It was so integrous because he, and he wasn't doing it to manipulate me. He was doing yeah. it to truly... Say, I, I thought I raised you better somewhere I missed it. And that was a breaking point for me. And I think no. that's, it's just so key in those times as parents, what we say to our children that, because they remember. I remember, yeah. you know, much older, but I remember what he said to me and, and the heart, from the heart, how it came across when I was 17. What you say to your girls, what parents, what we say to our children, whether they're young or older, has, it's very weighty, mm -hmm. and especially when it's done with a spirit of integrity. Absolutely. That shows that your dad took responsibility right. for areas where he's like, I probably did some things in yeah. the past. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's key. And I think walking in humility will show that we're integrous as well when yeah. we own up. It's a good, it's, I love this one, like as we said earlier, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Mm -hmm. That's our prayer for you. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your love week. You guys.